I was going to read additional brand new pieces from the periodic table of poetry because apparently people like that stuff. <laughs> so this one is Livermorium, which is number 160. Quarter to nine. It's quarter to nine. Uh-oh, I got the rope. Well, you know, Phil, in case somebody comes, I'll also read stuff from like our own space. So. Um, this is Livermorium, 160. For so many years, you've gone by another name. And then you seem surprised when people don't know who you are. <laughs> You've wanted to be known, and I've known you for years, but I've noticed that as time passes, as you grow, you move farther and farther away. You've tried for so long, and over the years, in our efforts to synthesize, we've had some successful reactions, some failures to react, and I know that some attempts have not even yet been made, but at times, those attempts at fusion with you seem far too hot for me to handle. And really, I assume they're too hot for you, too. Maybe your half-life is just so short that I never know what to do with you, and I'll never know what you'll do next. In our past four creations, this Quantum tunneling has been something I don't think I can handle any longer. And I'm sorry, but you're insufficiently stable, and you never let me confirm the true weightiness of your soul. So, maybe you should go your way, and I should go mine. I know your possible chemistry, and I know you want to share your soul with the entire world. I know this, and I'm sorry, but I've grown tired, and I know you'll continue to grow without me. So, yes, you should go your way, and I should go mine. Maybe one day you will truly find what you and the world so desperately needs. That's the fun with elements that are higher up that are all synthetic and you don't know anything about them. You can just extrapolate and do it with them. Um, though I didn't have that much of a chance to do that with number four in the periodic table because I had a little more time on throwing this one into this. This is beryllium. <laughs> I've wanted you with me. I've paid for fragments of you, spending what I could at the Gem and Jewelry show for years because all I could afford of you was aquamarine glimmers of you, blue like the endless sky above. In that aquamarine sky above, I'd see you in high-speed aircraft. I'd see the universe with your space vehicles, even travel the information superhighway in your communication satellites before you try to bombard me with your missiles. I, I, I've needed you with me, because I hear that you make things stronger, and I've needed that for so long. For so many years, I've needed that. I want to find someone that dated me for years and I thought I had a future with. I took him with me to get your green brilliance, wrap you around my neck, wrap you around my finger, frame you in diamonds and gold. I'll do whatever I could to get you. Your emerald brilliance, your aquamarine brilliance is what draws me to you. Still, I know it's irrational, my, my desire for you. I know that I don't need you, but you have been the window for me to all of the things inside of me, and even everything beyond this world. But with your colorful brilliance, you give the world strength. You help me see everything truly inside of me, help me communicate with the world, even help me beyond the confines of this world. When I lay it all out for you this way, you have to understand my desire for you. I know, doctors say I don't need you, but in a way, I do. So, I just wanted you to understand my seemingly 
irrational need. From stuff that's in aquamarine and emeralds, but they use it in the space satellites and like, is that right? And, yeah. and they use it in x rays and stuff. So it's like, I don't need you, but I might. So, um, this, uh, John over there at Light, this is number 85, and this is why I'm sharing it with you. This is Estatine. Everything shatters with you, you know. I am left picking up the pieces after dealing with only fractional amounts of you. I've only been able to infer what you're like by knowing your brethren as everyone around me and all the gapers gawk and your decay grows. In your twisted way, you come from the decay of others. And what do you leave in your wake? More radioactive destruction as all around you slows down to stare until your instability corrodes you down to the basics in the world. And yeah, what was left of you after you were gone was more stable than when you were here. But it was only after so much of your destruction that you left blood dripping down to the street. So, all I can think is that this continual decay is your contribution. This radioactive short-term flash of decay is you. I've tried to learn, I've tried to study these microscopic parts of you to make sense of you. But whether or not you ever leave enough, well, from what you show me, I have to keep reminding myself that despite your destruction, despite the decay of you, I have to keep going. Because when it comes to you, when it comes to what you do, well, this happens all the time. Um, this one, I'll see what you guys think of it. This is Francium. This is number 87 in the premiere of Tingle. Thinking of you, I'm reminded of someone taking his mother's guns and killing her in an elementary school, and then taking out 20 children, then five more adults before, before taking his own life. Remembering your destructive ways reminds me of going to a movie on opening night before someone walks in cloaked in dark clothes, setting off smoke bombs before killing anyone he could. Your metallic personality and your radioactive ways, you decayed anything you touched. So you wonder why I correlate you with any and all destruction, the way you'd be instrumented of death by slamming so much fuel, so much metal, so much life into the tallest building you could find, killing anything that crossed your path. And yeah, I correlate you with the government claiming to play nice while you helped over 80 faithful followers disintegrate in a fiery cataclysm. I've seen what you can do. And I can't help but make the connections. In such a short burst of time, you've killed seven in a shake temple. I've never seen you for long enough, but I think I can know what you might be like in bulk. But as I said, I've only seen you in these short bursts but oh what you've done in those short bursts i think it's funny how you unintentionally chose hitler's birthday to kill 13 teens injure over 20 more on an average otherwise school day I know, I know, you're rare, but when I see you, the world sees you, and we can't forget. 
I know it's such a little amount of you that exists at any time throughout the entirety of the earth. And I know others have tried to create you synthetically to try to learn from you. But those amounts have still been too small to make any difference. It's sad that this is the way you normally are. Your instability makes me think that you just can't be real. And I know that your rampages usually last no more than 20, maybe as long as 22 minutes. I'm just afraid that you are becoming more and more common in life. After all of these years, you have always been rare. But your repeated appearances in our lives scare me. I, I know that with you, everything falls apart so suddenly, so quickly, so violently. How much longer will we cross our fingers while we anticipate our next chance encounter? This one is somebody that I've heard somebody that likes. Dysprosium. This is this, the all screwed up way of making a poetry. This is Dysprosium. <laughs> this is number 66 in the periodic table. I knew I could cut through you like a knife. But you were always difficult to get at. With you, I couldn't get my fingers wet while I wore surgical gloves in my searches for you. I, I couldn't feel what I was doing when I was looking for you. But I kept looking because you had the highest magnetic strength of anything I had ever dealt with in my life. You drew me to you. I couldn't help it. I know you're not free, and the thing is, you've always tried to bring along some of your mineral compatriots whenever we try the chance to meet. And still, I have to search the world for you, go to the other side of the planet, because I swear I thought you were worth so much more than all the weight in China. I couldn't help it. I would, you would put a whole new light on everything after you hit me with your laser-like intensity. As I said, you had this magnetic effect on me. You're rare, and I couldn't help it. I should have known that if you got close, and if I got the chance to bring you in, I'd probably be, you would probably be an explosive hazard to me. Oh, I should have known that what we had could be ignited by the sparks we would make. But as I said, I couldn't help it. Even if you cause this spark, even if you cause this explosive reaction, I still would have to come back. Because no matter what, the burning I feel for you doesn't last as long as you do. You burn readily, but you're hard to get. So, I'm waiting for that next chance to feel those reactions with you again. <laughs>